Hi, welcome back. We're looking at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek, section 2.3, which is headed the nominative and accusative cases. Now, if you read this section, and it all seemed uh, fairly familiar, at least the English words did, because you've done formal grammar, perhaps through learning Latin or formal English grammar in the past, then you don't need to watch this video. This video is for you if you read this and you came across the word nominative and you'd never heard it before. Cases, you'd never heard it before in this concept, in this context. Accusative case, you've got no idea what that means. Because what I want to do is to give you a brief uh, overview of what Duff is getting at in this short section on pages 24 to 26 by looking at it in English. Let's take a look at this sentence right here. A man sees an angel. Now, first, Find the verb in this sentence. Pause for a second or two, stop the video and find the verb in this sentence. Okay, you found it. The verb in this sentence is sees. And so that's the action that's taking place. Now, who is doing the seeing and who is the thing or person being seen? We distinguish the person doing the seeing, doing the action of the verb, from the person who the action of the verb is being done to, and the subject of the verb is said to be the person doing the action, at least in this case with active verbs. Don't worry about that if it's news to you. So who's doing the action of seeing in this sentence? It's very easy. This, the man, is the subject of the verb. The subject of a verb is the person doing the action with active verbs. Okay, now who is the object of the verb then? Very simple, very straightforward. The object of the verb is the person or the thing that's having the action done to them. And in this case, the object is an angel. Now, therefore, a man is doing the action of the verb seeing an angel. Now, in English, how can you tell that it is the man who is seeing the angel and not the other way around? It's very simple. In English, it's word order that tells you everything in this sentence. So if I switched it around and I wrote instead, an angel sees a man, then in this case, you would know because of the word order, the verb is still the same, an angel is now the subject and a man is the object because in English we go subject, verb, object. English is an SVO language sometimes. Grammarians say this, SVO, subject, verb, object. Okay, so that's how English works. Now, but just imagine for a moment that we decided to invent a language in which word order didn't matter quite so much or in quite the same way as it does in English. And imagine therefore that we just jumbled all these things up. So I'm gonna get um, a man here and verb sees over here, and an angel down there. Let's make that lowercase so there's no clues. Okay, now, if I just had these words scattered around the page, and I could jumble them up in any order I wanted, so a man, an angel, and sees, instead of organizing my language so that it was word order, that told me what was the subject and what was the object. I could do it another way. I could just say, well, look, I'm gonna attach a little label to the subject, a little label that tells me it's the subject wherever it goes in the sentence. And I'll do the same thing with an angel, put a little flag on it right there, object. And now, well, I can already tell very easily what the verb is because I know what verbs mean. Now I could read this in any one of a number of ways and I would know that it is the man who's seeing the angel just because of the label that's attached. Okay, so I could write, he sees a man, an angel. Or I could, I could write, a man, an angel, he sees. Or I could even write, an angel a man he sees. And as long as I've got the labels attached to those little parts of the sentence, then it doesn't matter what order the different parts, subject, verb, object, come in. Now, here's the crucial point. That's how Greek works. 
In Greek, the way that you tell what is the subject of the verb is because there is a little label attached to it that tells you this is the subject. Similarly, the way that you know what's the object of a verb is there's a little label attached to it called, which tells you that it's the object. And those labels are called cases. The, the noun which is in the, uh, which is the subject of the verb is said to be in the nominative case. Nominative case. And the noun which is said, the object of the verb, is said to be in the accusative case. So, the labels, to the cases, sorry, the cases are like a little label attached to the words which tell you what those words are doing in the sentence. And it means, therefore, that the words themselves can come in any order pretty much, uh, and they still give you the same basic meaning. Now in the next video, we'll come back into section 2.3, and I'll show you what these labels are. You can read it for yourself, you need to be reading along with Duff with me, and that will then help us to see, okay, how does this structure work in Greek? And we'll come back to this example of a man sees an angel, and we'll start to see how you can change the subject and the object around using the case endings that Duff has shown you. Okay, so go back, take a look at pages 24 to 26, read through it again. Remember, I'm not teaching you to uh, read New Testament Greek, I'm helping you to teach yourself New Testament Greek with the aid of Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five or six days a week, and in a year or two we'll have you reading the New Testament with no trouble at all. Okay, God bless, see you next time.